Joining us now is Russian broadcaster Vladimir Posner and former director of the CIA and NSA General Michael Hayton. Good to see you both this morning. My goodness me, this is fantastically complicated uh, for all of us to follow the twists and turns of who's loyal to who. But I guess at the nub of it, the fear is that Russia, either officially backed by the state or unofficially, has been influencing the situation in America and also possibly the UK too. Um, how worried should we be? Vladimir is laughing at this, by the way, <laughs> which isn't a great start. Are you laughing because, you know, it happens, or are you laughing because it's I'm a crazy question? I'm laughing because it's a crazy question. And is you, it? Yes, and you shouldn't be worried at all. <clears throat> There's no way that Russian propaganda can really influence <clears throat> the American voter or the British voter, for that Why matter. not? Why not? Well, Why can't hacking into the system? We know how, how during even our election campaign, there's been all sorts of targeting oh, yes, well, that's uh, of That's true, people. because you can influence yourselves. I mean, your media, for instance, obviously influences uh, your, your watchers because you're part of this country. But when a foreign country tries to influence it, it, it backfires. It never works. Do you think that's fair, Michael? Do you think it, it backfired this time? Because I'm sure Hillary Clinton would disagree. Well, it didn't back backfire with regard to the impact on the election, which I think uh, was significant. Now, it's immeasurable, all right? So we are very careful back home to say the exact influence on the campaign is not just unknown, it is unknowable. So President Trump is unarguably the legitimate president of the United States. Mm. But there's no question. You had the entire American intelligence community with a high-confidence judgment point out this sequence of events in which the data was stolen, weaponized, pushed back into the American political process and then trolled, heavily trolled, by agents of the Russian Federation to pull it forward in, inside social media, inside general social consciousness. And let me compliment the Russians. This was a magnificent covert influence campaign. And, and Vladimir does have one point, all right? Well, that, covert, that influence, <laughs> covert influence rarely creates a fracture in a society. Covert influence succeeds when it's aware of and exploits pre-existing mm -hmm. fractures in a society. And that's exactly what the Russian services did. Give them credit. They knew us at least as well as we knew ourselves. OK, so what are we actually talking about here? You know, we've become aware, haven't we, in our British election of these, what they call the, the little robot the things and memes and things where people can tweet from right. fake sources and they're actually sure. robots. So and all they appear of that to be a mass when it could sure. be a few yeah. individuals. Well, exactly, and it appears to be a mass. So all of that kind of thing goes on. Um, is that what you're talking about? That is part of the overall campaign. Okay. There's, there's, there are a variety of tools, and, and magnificently synchronized, beginning with almost certainly using Russian criminal gangs to steal the original information, the DNC, Democrat National Committee emails, uh, John Podesta's emails and so on, pull them back into the hands of the Federation, the Russian Federation, where they, at their own choosing, mm -hmm. then push it in accordance with their rhythm, their sense of rhythm of the American electoral process. So, for example, the massive tranche, the first dump of information, takes place as, as the party is gathering for its national convention. That's yeah. not accidental. So, Vladimir, I mean, uh, listening to what Michael said, and undoubtedly... Yes, except I must say one thing. There's no proof. And, and the, That's this, the whole this, issue. This, uh, I mean, come on, if you have this proof, put it on the table and make it very clear that this is what the Russians have done. Um, I mean, they must be jumping up and down with joy in the Kremlin. But the security Kremlin agencies have with, said with the, that. But, yeah, but the security agencies <coughs> in the States have said quite so clearly it was, it they, was the Russians. They've said it, and the Russians have said no. And is the American word, for some reason, um, more to be believed than the Russian one? I say, show me. After all, we're journalists, right? Yeah. Show me, and I, then I'll accept it. But... I, I can't see it. I so think you're, one of the reasons why people prefer to believe it without proof is because there is a sense that Vladimir Putin would like I to do that. I think that's a very good question. And he would like to assert it. It feels like it's part of his... that there's a very strong anti-Russian sentiment in the West. It hasn't been born today. It's been around for a long time. And the minute you say Russian, people kind of react to it. And that's why they're prone to believe it. And that's the way they've been conditioned. As in Russia, people are prone to believe that when you say American, it's something negative. This is what the media have done, by the way, in both countries. And not only that, but the politicians. It's interesting you say that, though, because it seems that uh, the Western values that we have seem to be at odds with some of Vladimir Putin's values. And uh, Oliver Stone, the famous director, has done a series of interviews with him that I know going to be broadcast on American TV. Have you? But there are some quotes 
from the interviews in the Times today. And here's some, here's some quotes. Uh, Oliver Stone asked Mr Putin whether he ever has a day off. And this is the, the president says, I'm not a woman, so I don't have bad days. I'm not trying to insult anyone. That's the nature of things. They have certain natural cycles, which men probably have as well, just less manifested. We are all human beings, it's normal, but you should never lose control. Suggesting that perhaps women don't cope as well as men do in these situations because of their Are natural Are you telling cycle. me that in the West no one shares that view? But this is... It's, but this, it's not politically but, correct but, but, to say it. So I mean, I, you problem? know, okay. there are a lot of people who feel that way. You know, I'm not here to support Putin, believe me. So that's his view. But that's, you but know, you I don't, that I don't share seems, that at that all. That seems like a very sexist view for Agreed. the president. Agreed. And to say so Agreed. publicly on a, on a national platform I that's totally been agree with you. I, so he clearly I, doesn't worry about being how he's perceived he in America. He may not even know that in the West there would be a reaction to that. Do you he agree may with think that, that It's a possibility. This is not part of what he he's, thinks but he's about. Not, but he's not a naive person either. He's a very bright, intelligent True. man that has True. commanded the country. True. Saying things like that, he must know that's going to gauge a reaction. Uh, I, I, so? I, yeah, I, I think he does. He's, he's a, look, he, he's a career intelligence officer who spent, spent his entire life studying, common, studying right? me. Yeah. Studying <laughs> me. All right? So I would expect <clears> him <throat> to have some understanding of our broader society. Can I quickly come back to the earlier question mm. about proof? I, I, in terms of the manipulating of, of our election, and perhaps of yours, and of the French, and of the Germans, and of the and Dutch, the and the Dutch. The Russians are and everywhere, we'll, for and God's we'll sake. Well, act, actually, modern technology allows the Russian Federation to do something that they have traditionally been associated with on a massive scale. Does it not allow the U.S. to do the same it, thing? It, it, in terms of the raw capacity of out there, it does. yes. Perhaps but we're talking. So. Well, well, actually, <laughs> actually, one of one of my faults as director of CIA was not that I meddled too much in Russian affairs. One of my faults as director of CIA was I'd hardly paid any attention to Russia. But you and did yet, meddle, and right? Yet, no, we did not. <laughs> and, and yet you think I spent every morning on the seventh floor at Langley, all waking moments, figuring out ways to make Vladimir Putin's life less pleasant than it would otherwise be. Again, if we had a fault, I should have paid more attention to the Russians. Should have been doing that Russians. more. Well, look, um, it's Very been fascinating hearing from the two of you. Mm. Uh, I know that you're you're doing a debate tonight, aren't you? Intelligence yes, Squared. Are. You're doing a it's debate. Intelligence Tudian. Squared, I believe. Is yeah. Uh, the two of you will be debating this, and I'm sure it'll be absolutely four of us. Four, there's four another of us. two. Yeah, of you we're well. going to be on different sides. Yes. <laughs> really? You don't believe that? <laughs> you never do you? know. You never know. <laughs> that we have got proof. Really enjoyed that. Vladimir Posner, the former director of the CIA, NSA, General Michael Hayden. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.